You see this tiny little rock here? It's a type of mineral that can only be found on one place on Earth, and for the last 70 years it's been illegal to collect it from that site. It's called Trinitite, and I can tell you that this piece here, and in fact every piece in existence, was formed at exactly 5.29am on July 16th, 1945, which is pretty specific for dating a rock. Normally a geologist will just give you the nearest millennia. And the reason I can be so specific, as you might have guessed from the date, is because it was formed in the blast of the first ever nuclear explosion. I like to think of Trinitite as a snapshot of the moment that humanity entered the atomic age, frozen in time as this new mineral. And knowing that all the Trinitite that will ever exist was formed in that single moment makes it even more special and unique. The detonation, codenamed Trinity, was the culmination of the Manhattan Project, run by Robert Oppenheimer. It was the first experimental proof that compressing plutonium into a supercritical state could create an explosion more powerful than any conventional weapon. And it was less than a month after this test that the technology was used to devastating effect in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After the explosion at the Trinity site, the area was investigated, and they found that the 100 foot steel tower that the bomb was suspended from had been completely evaporated, which you might expect it being at the centre of a nuclear blast. And they also found that the sand, the white sand on the ground, had become sort of green glassy material around the area of the bomb, with a few small patches of red mineral scattered around as well. In more recent years, samples of these minerals have been analysed, and it's believed that the green colour comes from iron, which was deposited when the steel structure was vaporised and the iron was fused with the molten sand. And in the red mineral, the colour comes from copper, which is from the electrical wiring of the bomb. The scientists working on the Manhattan Project didn't think much of this glassy green deposit at the time. They had more important things to worry about. But after the war, when the existence of nuclear bombs and the test site became public knowledge, people started going there and picking up this mineral, which they called Trinitite, after the Trinity Test Centre that it was found at. And they started making jewellery out of it and selling it as souvenirs to people who came by. You see, this nuclear stuff was also new, that the idea of nuclear contamination wasn't really considered. But in the subsequent years, they did a lot more nuclear tests and they got a better understanding of, you know, how the ground can be contaminated with some of the nuclear material from the bomb. And so eventually, in the early 1950s, the US government started analysing samples of Trinitite and they found that it was actually quite radioactive. So they removed most of the tritonite left at the test site, buried it in an undisclosed location, bulldozed the rest of the site, and made collecting trinitite from the site illegal. But it was still legal to possess and sell samples of trinitite collected before the ban. And that's why it's quite rare these days, because all the samples out there were collected in that few year period between the explosion and it being banned. These days, trinitite is perfectly safe to handle, because most of the radioactivity is gone because the most active isotopes also have quite short half-lives. It does still have a detectable level of radiation, but it's not that high above background. And yet, to this day, collecting Trinitite from the test site is still illegal, and I wouldn't expect that to change anytime soon, because no matter how safe Trinitite is, the US government probably just doesn't want people digging up their nuclear test sites. So now we know its history, Let's take a closer look at the rock itself. The shape of the rock can give us a clue how it formed. For example, some samples are sort of round or blob shaped and entirely glassy all the way round, which indicates that they were formed in the air when molten sand was shot up and cooled down rapidly before it hit the ground. While other samples, like my one here, are more flat and have one glassy side and one sort of grainy side. That indicates that this sample here was created on the ground, where the surface of the sand melted and formed a glassy finish, and underneath, particles of the sand fused to the bottom. And if we check the radioactivity with my Geiger counter, we can see that the glassy side has a raised level of radiation. But the fused sand side has very little radiation, 
which corroborates that one, this is a genuine sample of Trinitite, and two, that the glassy side was facing the bomb and some nuclear material from the bomb was fused into the sample. I want to display my sample on a shelf, so I'm thinking about how to mount it. A lot of people just sort of put it on a little info card, but I want to showcase the device that created it. So I found this model of the Trinity bomb online. It came in three parts, so I printed all of those. And then when it came to painting it, I looked at some reference images from replicas in museums, but they all have slightly different paint jobs and there's no color images of the original Trinity device because it was made in 1945 and obviously it didn't survive the detonation. So I just chose the colors from the replica that looked reasonable and went with that. I also printed these small little pieces that the wires go into and painted them. And then I added over 50 of these small black wires, trying to get their positions as accurate as possible. So now the model's made, I drilled a hole in the top. And I shaped four thin copper rods. Then I glued them together. And covered them in heat shrink. And then I adjusted the shape of the arms so it held the Trinitite sample firmly. And here's the finished display. Of course, there's been many nuclear detonations since Trinity, and I'm sure some of them have created their own minerals as well. But because the ground everywhere is different, they're all distinct, and none of them are Trinitite. Anyway, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.